Okay, you are all set and streaming. All right, thank you. We're streaming, we're recording. Uh, so uh, I'm Andy Helmboldt, uh, committee chair, and we're calling to order uh, the October 4th meeting of the Sustainable BC Committee, just 3.31 p.m. Um, I, I think has been we we were on Zoom for a while and getting all the Zoomy Zoomy stuff down and then we we tried meeting in person one time and that that was ha that was half a meeting um, but I know one thing we were trying to do was just name the uh, where where we all are so if we could just go, um, if we could just go around uh, just just say your name and where you are so I, I'm Andy Humble through the community volunteer and committee chair and I am here in uh, Battle Creek Michigan at my home um let me just uh, I'll just call on folks just to introduce yourself just just for sake of I'll just go around my screen uh Bessie hi I'm Bessie Steers I'm the environmental program coordinator for the city of Battle Creek I am currently at home in uh, Burlington all right uh Joshua uh, Joshua Etheridge, committee member, and I am in Battle Creek, Michigan. All right, uh, Bob. Hi, I'm Bob Gilbert. I am a community volunteer, and I am at my office at Pierce Cedar Creek Institute in Hastings. All right, uh, Kurt. Hi, Kurt Trivet, um, engineering administrator for the city of Battle Creek, currently from my home in um, Climax area. Thank you, sir. Sarah Kelly. Sarah Kelly, Solid Waste Recycling Coordinator for Calhoun County. I am at the County Building in Marshall, Michigan. All right, uh, Kiona. Kiona Ackley, resident of Battle Creek. I'm currently in Katy, Texas. Oh, you win the, well, we're wailing around you. I'm assuming you win the, the long distance prize, but uh, Patty. <laughs> Uh, Patty Hoke Meluish, Environmental and Storm Service Manager, City of Battle Creek, and I'm at the Department of Public Works in Battle Creek right now. Alrighty, uh, I see Jill Anderson coming on, connecting to audio. Hey, Jill, did you just uh, welcome? Uh, do you just want to uh, introduce yourself and say where you are? Hi, sorry folks, I was just walking George home from school. Um, I am Jill Anderson, pronouns are she, her, hers, and uh, I'm on East Michigan Avenue. All right, Kathy. Hello, Kathy Antea, resident of Battle Creek. She, he, they, uh, what else do I, uh, reporting in from Battle Creek. Is that what I'm, I'm supposed to say? Yep, thank you. Um, and then we have some some city staff folk, a couple of whom are new to me. And we uh, Lisa Silkworth from Kirk's office here, or Lisa, are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right, thank you. And um, if the other couple of staff folks would introduce themselves real quick, I know you're probably multitasking to the meeting, just helping support us, but. Um, sure. Hi, my name is Cassie Cooper. I'm the new communication specialist for the city of Battle Creek, and I am just on here to monitor the meeting and as well as the public live stream. All right. Thank you, Cassie. Nice, nice to meet you, sort of. Um, and who do we have? We have someone from from IT or who's that voice speaking to us earlier? Somebody. I believe that voice was Chad earlier, but it seems that he has stepped away from the computer at yeah, the time. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I was just having a problem unmuting there. What, what what do you need? Oh, we just uh, we were just introducing ourselves, just saying your name and Hi. where where you are. This is Chad, IT host. Uh, I'm at the Department of Public Works building uh, for the City of Battle Creek. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chad and and Cassie and and Lisa for for supporting uh, meeting. Um. All right. It, 
whoops, where'd my, uh, I believe the, the minutes would be our first order of business. Uh, I did send around the, the agenda and, and minutes. We did get minutes from Lisa from our August meeting. Uh, minutes are fairly brief, straightforward. So hopefully you had a chance to at least look at those and that would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from August. I motion to approve. By Kiona, second. Okay, moved by Patty and seconded by Kiona um, to approve the August minutes. Is there any other discussion or comment or, or question about the minutes? All right, then those in favor of approving the minutes, uh, please wave affirmatively. All right, that is everyone. Thank you. Uh, minutes approved. Um, all right. Uh, our, our pretty much a standard agenda here. We're going to do our, our, our chance for city and, and other folks to report on happenings. Um, and then we'll get into, we'll touch base about the plan and what we, we need to sort of recover some ground from last time a little bit. Um, and then we have uh, one uh, business bit of business left over uh, about data sharing that we wanted to do and talk about the November Recycling Month Proclamation. Um, oh, which, which reminds me, uh, I, uh, I heard from Commissioner Blood. Uh, Commissioner Blood is not feeling well and is, is at the, the uh, urgent care trying to be seen uh, this afternoon. So she will not be here. Um, um, told her, you know, no worries, take care of yourself, get well, do what you need to do. Um, so that's, that is what is up with, uh, Kristen. All right. Uh, reports, um, we'll start with the, our CDBC folks, uh, how, whoever has reports to give Bessie, Patty, Kurt, who, however you want to do it. I, I, I can start with the, um, oh, the, the energy efficiency yep. items we have. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, we have one one program that we're in with uh, Consumers Energy called Demand Response, and that uh, just recently ended. It's over the summertime when uh, Consumers Energy is sensing that uh, or that they're going to have a shortage on electric. Instead of building larger plants, they uh, they look at uh, they have a portfolio of, of businesses and companies that uh, they can call on to reduce energy or you know the, the, the electrical use during the peak time so so we are part of that portfolio um we did go on one one response this summer where we um cut back on the uh generator or uh cut back on power at our, our verona pumping station we have a generator there so we just go on generator uh, we can do that also with our uh, lift stations we can that have portable generators, we can put those on generators. And then um, also at the wastewater, we can uh, kick, um, reduce some equipment out there. So we have th three three different demand response programs with Consumers Energy. And um, we just uh, recently received a, a credit to our bill for $19,000 at the Verona for, for going on a generator. And then um, I haven't seen it yet, but I expect our wastewater will will be getting about a nine thousand dollar credit here shortly too for the, the putting most stations on on standby generators and also the um, the, the equipment reduction. So that's one, one one program we're in. We also just did some um, at the water plant. We had a project with our rim plant where we. Um, upgraded our, our filters. Uh, there was some media in there that needs to be replaced every 20 years. And we were at that point. So by doing that, we did um, some other energy reduction programs as such as uh, putting some uh, VFDs on, on our low service pumps. Um, we also put uh, LED lighting in, in the, um, the filter bed area. So, so we just recently received a, uh, almost a $5,000 check for a rebate check from Consumers Energy for that work. And, and, um, and then we just do what we can. Um, our uh, controls foreman, uh, 
supervisor, Chris Pratt, just uh, did some uh, LED lighting replacement at the wastewater plant in the admin building. And uh, he was able to just, he filled out the work and got a, got a $2,000 rebate for us for, for that work. So, so those are some of the things that we're doing with the energy um, program for the city. Kathy? So I just have to ask, Kurt, according to my math calculations, the city has just saved about $24,000 this last month. And I'm certain I'm going to see a rebate check in the mail from the city. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm channeling you're, you're, one of our well-known. Uh, oh, community. yeah. Yeah, I know who you're speaking of. Yeah. So you might not want to mention that at the meeting tomorrow. Um, no, I actually had a real question for you, Kurt, for a minute. I hope everybody's smiling if you appreciate where I'm coming from with that. Um, uh, Kurt, I, when we were standing out there last time with the recycling thing, that beautiful big water valve that's right out in front of DPW, would you remind us of the story of that? Because I had several people, uh, residents ask, and I made something up, but I would you help me remember what the real story is? Um, sure. That was a project we did uh Oh, I think in 2018 that dragged for it seemed like it took a while to do it, but that was part of um, we had a just a oh, lack of term, just a rat nest of uh, piping out at uh, Verona pumping. So we pulled pulled that out and straightened up a lot of pipe to, to just to make it more efficient as part of another project too. So. Um, so those valves are we we salvaged two valves from that that um, scrap heap of, of just piping mess, um, and so we uh, so there's two of them. There's one at the, yeah, at the DPW that uh, we've refurbished and um, placed out there, and then there's another one out at Verona pumping station. So I tried to talk our guys into sending it up to Art Fair, but you know, we weren't sure if Art Fair was going to do it or not. So it was cool this year. But, yeah, it's pretty cool looking, and and uh, the contractor donated that that those, those frames and, and the time and the money to paint it and clean it up. So, so the only thing we paid for was the concrete pads that they sit on. No, no, they 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 paid that too. So, yeah, I was, yeah. So, you're you're um, Mr. Bar you're Mr. Bargain. That was Perry. I yeah. Okay, I, okay. He, he kind of offhand suggested that, and they bid on it, and so. So, yeah, um, they, they got her done. And we're getting, a, I'm going up next uh, Wednesday for, the, the, we did win a uh, APWA a statewide award for that project. And so I'll be accepting an award up there next, next Wednesday. Cool. Um, this, the rebates that you mentioned for the, the high demand, the, the consumers. Um, so, I'm I'm assuming then that the that the cost to the city of, of going on the generator going on generator power is less than than the rebate that we get from. Yeah, I, we, we do have a fuel fuel cost for for putting that on, and um, and, and part of that they, they when they call it the demand response, they they do uh, add a little bit more money to help cover that that, that fuel cost. But it's actually a good thing to exercise those um, generators. So, you know, it's, um, you know, otherwise, it just sits all, all year long. So. Yeah, good all around. Um, all right. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, unless anyone else has questions for Kurt, um, Bessie or Patty, any, anything from? Actually, if I can share the screen, Bessie's got a, we'll, we'll, go through this uh, some of it you've seen but um i if i can share post disabled participant screen sharing maybe i'm not gonna be able to share the screen you can share now okay all right thank you okay. all right okay can you see it yep okay i'm going to Start it here, move you guys over there, and uh, Bessie, you give me the cue when you want me to move on, okay? Okay, can everybody see the numbers okay on the screen in the, in yep. the data tables? 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a few of these slides are repeats, but it's nice to reflect a little bit. Um, so you can see highlighted in blue our styrofoam collections this year. We're pretty successful. 1,000 to 14,000 pounds of styrofoam uh, recycled. And as we'll see later on, our August 28th event was even higher than that. So go ahead, Patty. Oh, gosh, it went to, it was a delay. So <laughs> I'm trying uh, to. We can, yeah, we can, uh, okay. we can probably speak over this. Here we there go. We go. <laughs> One more. One more? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there. And this, the scrap tire collection, I think, is another review, um, but that was very successful. We were able to get rid of the other tires, um, but 1,400 scrap tires off the streets, which is really great. Go ahead, Patty. Okay. And just an update, I believe, on the rain barrel sales, we're going to try to do um, an extra fun, like a little fundraiser next year to help support our stormwater program. So we're going to try to, we're going to tack on $5 um, per barrel. And, and I think that will, will help us um, be able to do some more fun things with our stormwater education and outreach. Um, an update on our recycle kits. Um, looks like we're doing pretty good still. Steady flow of residents coming in to get their free battery and light bulb kits. Go ahead, Patty. And farmer's market, I believe we went over this, but just an overview. Um, we did talk about storm water and wellhead protection, recycling, and Sophie did a pollinator um, um, a display uh, one of the uh, times we went. So very successful, 455 people we chatted with. So, um, yep, go ahead, Patty. Uh, photo contest winners, we have one on today. Jill got first place. Congratulations, Jill. What a beautiful picture that's going to be on the cover of the 2022 calendar, community calendar. Um, beautiful pictures um, we received this year. I'm putting the calendar together and I can tell you it's it's been <laughs> very difficult because how can you choose just one picture um, for each month? It's, it's very difficult. Um, our first place youth category was Nathaniel Lowry, um, another great picture. Um, go ahead, Patty. Uh, further winners, second place adult winner was Nicole Hardish in the top left. Um, third place adult was David uh, Damro, if I'm saying that correct. Um, awesome picture on Grand Lake. And second place youth was Gabrielle Costi, uh, the great blue heron. Third place winner was Peyton Sutherland. Sutherland. Um, great pictures. Go ahead, Patty. And yep, so uh, the 2022 calendar, I'm working on that. Lawson Printers uh, received the quote uh, to print the calendars for us. So I'm working with them and getting that uh, squared away so we can get those calendars hopefully by Thanksgiving. Go ahead, Patty. Uh, some fun numbers, August 28th, we had 455 people show up at our styrofoam and electronics collection. That's about as much as the county sees at some of their events. Um, 96 bags of styrofoam. As you can see, we had to tuck them under the trailer at the bottom there. 1,700 pounds of, of styrofoam. That's just amazing to me. And um, the electron, electronics poundage is 42,000 pounds. So we, we doubled last year's almost. Um, so really great turnout. Everybody that helped, thank you. Um, very successful. Go ahead, Patty.
Uh, Canoe to Kazoo, I don't remember if we had talked about this or not, but that was a huge success. 60 paddlers. Um, that was a great, great turnout. Super fun time. Go ahead, Patty. Crazy for the kazoo. What a Saturday we had last Saturday. Whew. We had good weather. Um, just blessed with, with the beautiful weather. So lucky. Um, we had about 90 people show up and, um, and work in various locations. We had the rock garden at Irving Park, the mill pond, um, various locations on the linear path. And um, we had a crew clean up the, the bridge on Kendall Street. Just amazing how much better it looks. We're still um, not sure on how much invasive removal we got and how many bags, um, but it's got to be close like it was last year. Um, and Jim Curry and the Math Science Center kids planted uh, 25 to 30 trees um, this year. And as you can see, we have a huge thank you list um, and just great sponsors and the t-shirts turned out great this year. Um, huge crew with Denzo, the manager's team with Battle Creek, um, Mark, Rob, and Kim, and Dan at Site 2, um, Ben Garberick and his troop, Jim Curry and the Math and Science Center, Brian Cook and the Serial City Lions Club, Jill um, and her crew, the Rotary Club, uh, floated the river and got some just huge amounts of tires out. As you'll see in the coming pictures, Karen Slack and her crew, Kathy Antea at the Rock Garden, Calhoun County Health Department, City of Springfield, and everybody else. Thank you. Go ahead, Patty. Um, some of the photos, and we, we are still awaiting more photos. We had a photographer, Jim Benson, come out and take some. So these are just some photos that I snapped of the event. And uh, some of the other members snapped pictures as well and sent them. Um, so our manager's crew in the upper left there, um, I thought it was fun to, to throw out some animals and I, uh, had them <laughs> be the skunks this year. <laughs> um, and, uh, you can see their tree plantings in the upper right. Um, yeah. So just some hard work, um, hard work this year. Go ahead, Patty. And some more photos, um, and you can see the tire crew, um, the river cleanup crew. I think Jill lost the t-shirt there in the middle. It was just too far gone after <laughs> cleaning up all the muck and <laughs> the tires out. Um, and the Serial City lines there in the upper, uh, upper top. Um, go ahead, Patty. Um, so our groundwater model, I think we chatted about this before, we're still kind of in the process of uh, working on this. It's, uh, it's going to be a slow project, I think. It's just, it's a big, it's a big undertaking. So not much to um, update on this just yet. Uh, Boy Scout Storm Inlet Marking Project is going well. Um, just wanted to let you all know that that's still going on and, um, just some fun pictures, um, troop three, five, five. Girl Scout updates. Um, and again, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, um, but Sophie led them a small crew. They made some really fun, uh, Mason and leaf cutter bee housing. And uh, we got those hung up, as you can see in the bottom left, uh, in a tree along the river off Jackson Street. Um, they made some birdhouses. I have yet to get those up. Um, I need to get some poles for those. Um, and they did a butterfly, butterfly release at the Arboretum. So some fun pictures on the right there. Go ahead, Patty. A few more tidbits. Uh, we purchased an Enviroscape model. And um, we're hopefully looking forward to getting into a couple classrooms this year. Uh, Stephen Lewis from the Math and Science Center, um, he's gonna be borrowing that soon and, and working with that with his, some of his classes. Um, and Patty, do you wanna take over? Sure. Um, 
so the, the next bullet item is chloride monitoring. Um, currently we have uh, a, a couple of staff members of the Math and Science Center that have some kids that are, um, we're, we're just kind of trying to determine if we're seeing any impacts from road salting. So we did some monitoring last week to get some baseline numbers and it's just done with a little um, chloride test strip. So it'll be really easy for the Math and Science Center kids to just walk out and grab that during snow melt events. And so, so that's going on. We have a couple data points now. Um, we're starting a citywide hard hat recycling program. Um, hard hats I've learned recently are only, they have a lifespan of like three to five years, something like that. And then they have to be replaced. And so um, Franklin Plastics here in Battle Creek um, said if we, you know, have the volume enough and so that they could recycle hard hats for us. So we have some containers, a container at DPW that we uh, have out for hard hat recycling. Um, our radio ads are continuing to play. Uh, we're going to renew the contract again on that. And we're doing a lot of partnering with City Kalamazoo. With, we have a lot of the same messaging. So that's been an efficient way to get, get the word out. Um, the latest Department of Public Works newsletter, BC Works, should be in the mailbox, as I'm hoping, this week. Um, and that has a lot of recycling information, just um, stormwater well, you know, a lot of our outreach um, programs are in there and um, some other public works topics of interest. Our illicit discharge and elimination program is, uh, we're, we're getting that going, um, kind of cleaned up and streamlined again. That's where we're looking for. Um, discharges coming out of stormwater outfalls into the into waterways that are not stormwater. So we're trying to identify any um, sources of pollutant and pollutants into the waterways. Um, Bessie and I will be attending the Michigan Recycling Coalition Conference in Bay City the end of the month. So it looks like some really good topics and we'll, we'll share with you what we learned there. Um, the DNR pollinator grant is uh, wrapping up. We're going to have the the plantings going in at the end of October, early November, eight and a half acres will be planted with pollinator habitat. We're gonna have 25 new trees that are good for pollinators. And then in the spring, we're gonna put in about 700 plugs uh, with, with um, wildflower plugs. We're still awaiting these three grants. Um, the one is the Tree Planting and Urban Canopy Assessment Grant. The Midwest Glacial Lakes Partnership Grant is for stormwater diversion from Gogwak Lake. And then the Eagle Wellhead Protection Grant. And all three of these um, should be announced at any time. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that too. So I think that wraps up for what we have. So if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Go ahead, Bob. Hi, Patty. I was just curious. Uh, I'm interested in that uh, chloride monitoring program, and you said that you were going to look for the impacts of road salts. What type of impacts will you be monitoring? How will you know that there's an impact? Well, so the idea is in the at this time of year, we're getting kind of our baseline numbers. And then um, after a snow event, when there's been road salting, um, then you go out and, and, and monitor after, you know, when, when there's some salting or, or in the spring when, the, when there's snow melt as well. And then you see, you know, you can, you can get upstream, downstream impacts and see if there's, there's any influence from road salting. So sort of be, a, go ahead. Would, would it be like um, plant uh, impacts on plants or, or are you just monitoring the level of chloride detected the, in the water? Yeah, the concentration oh, okay. in the water, yes. Okay, great. That's a good program. I'm glad to see the city doing that. Yeah, and if anybody wants to do it, the test strips are cheap, and, you know, they're, it's a simple thing to do. It's just a color strip. There was a, a, a student who did a project in the 90s um, and got a bunch of data points back then, too. It probably would be irrelevant now, but it is something that people have been looking into for the last several decades. So um, it'll be great to see what the impact is now and uh, get that baseline and then see if we can change it for the future. No, cool. so, assuming it's not gonna be good. <laughs> Patty? 
Th yes. Thank you. Um, when you talked about the pollinator habitat, I was in a tangle with some people on the uh, <laughs> internet this spring about the stuff dying along Jackson Avenue, uh, Jackson Street and the river. Is that where most of the eight acres of butterfly habitat will be planted? Yes, there's a, a stretch. It's between um, 20th and Stringham. And it's, mo well, we're, they're, they're going to be planting some on the north side of Jackson and then most on the south side of Jackson. And then there's about less than, about an acre and a half at the Arboretum as well. Cool. So, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Any other uh, questions or comments for Patty and Bessie? All right. Thank you both. A lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff going on there. Thank you. Um, Sarah, anything county, county wise? Uh, we do have an upcoming um, household hazardous waste collection on October 23rd. So I do have a special event application into the city just because of our line. Um, our attendance continues to be pretty big for those events this year. So um, I look forward to another heavily attended event. And um, boy, I, I went and helped with our, our September one in Marshall. And it was kind of cool to see some of the stuff coming in. I've never seen a PCB um, lamp ballast before, but we had a gentleman come with a pickup truck load of those. So that was kind of an interesting, interesting thing that I hope to not see a whole lot, but I was kind of excited to get those um, in off the street, you know. Um, we're going to work on doing some educating with the public because we had someone that brought us a cardboard box full of uncovered um, syringes with needles. Uh, and so that's a safety risk for everyone. Um, and just reminding everyone that we do have the sharps disposal boxes. Um, there is one in Battle Creek in the lobby of the Toller building um, available for people to use when the Toller building is open to the public. Um, and then we also take sharps at our household hazardous waste collections too. Uh, we continue to send people to the CNC Landfill Recycle Center. So in September, um, we had 528 loads of recycling that went into that recycling center. Uh, and so that's continuing to be used heavily. Um, and if anyone knows someone looking for a part-time job, we are seriously <laughs> trying to recruit a couple people to be recycling aides so we can reopen the Marshall Recycle Center as soon as possible. So. If anybody knows, the job is posted on the Calhoun County website um, under HR, and um, we would like to get that center open. Um, our recycling trailer should be here hopefully in November, by mid-December at the latest, um, and we'll be taking that out into the rural townships and then also having that available for community events. Um, so hopefully next time when we get to a canoe the kazoo or river cleanup, we'll have that recycling trailer <laughs> that we can use to get water bottles and cardboard boxes and stuff. So um, just working on those those projects and um, keeping busy with my working with that Eagle infrastructure grant that I have. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so is the household house space, is that at Bailey Park? That is at the Toller building in Battle Creek. Oh, so okay. nine, yep, nine to noon in the parking lot behind the Toller building. And okay. we would like people to make a line on Bennett Street. Uh, on which street? Bennett. Bennett. That runs along the off Michigan or off Main Street to the side of it, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's what I talked with um, someone from the police department and we discussed things and he felt that that was probably the best, the best place to put that line to interfere less with the traffic on the busier roads. Yeah. Okay, uh, questions for Sarah? All righty, thank you. Um, we don't have anyone from, from uh, planning here. Uh, as I think I mentioned a couple months ago, Eric Felt, who used to be kind of the, the planning liaison, uh, left the city of Battle Creek for uh, some other municipality. Um, 
that there's still supposed to be some kind of uh, connection or liaison with, with the planning uh, department. Uh, we don't have any. We don't have any city commission presence here. Usually, we ask for a commission, any commission update. Like I mentioned, uh, Commissioner Blood is uh, is ill and at the at the doctor. Um, sometimes we have Mayor Banky here, but I don't see him either. Um, so we will push forward then. Um, the one uh, one thing on on the agenda with regard to the sustainability plan itself. Um, I just want to, we had, if you were at, a, if you were at the meeting last, when we, we met once in person, um, we started our meeting, we met for about a half hour and then uh, our the city staff realized that the city hall building was closing at 4 p.m., uh, which ended our, our meeting because we could no longer have, it was no longer an open meeting. Uh, so we adjourned any, any, uh, any formal activity didn't take any more business after that. Um, what we did do is, is that some of us, I think probably all of us stuck around and talked with Carl Fetters from uh, DPW. Um, just an informal uh, conversation with Carl. He had, he had come to meeting just to talk with us about some uh, where things stood with the plan and, and just kind of things, things from his angle. Um, the vast majority of that conversation was about trees, tree planting, tree planting, tree tree planting, tree planning, tree, uh, all things trees. So we had a bit of a, a Q and A with, with Carl about, about trees, um, but no, no decisions were made or revisions to the plan or, 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 or anything of that nature. But I did want to uh, mention that while we were in uh, an open meeting here now, just to recap. So if anyone from the public watching has, has any questions, um, you know, specifically about, about trees or, in anything of that nature, they want to reach out to, to us or to uh, DPW directly. They perfectly welcome to do that. Um, all right, one thing that we wanted to do, uh, business-wise, at that last meeting, uh, that City Manager Rebecca Flurry had asked us asked us to do um, that we didn't get to. So I'd like to get to that now, just to to make that official. Is that um, she had asked. Um, that we uh, uh, consider a, a resolution here from the committee to to ask the the city manager to to encourage uh, staff in different departments to share whatever data is necessary to be shared across departments um, for for the purpose of progressing on on our sustainability plan goals. You know, for like for instance, a couple of meetings ago. So an example of that would be. Um, like the mileage and fuel usage data when we're talking about fleet, like we had Steve uh, Steve Seaman in and he was a couple of meetings ago and he was talking about various things in regard to, to fleet and efficiency and fuel consumption and, and, and whatnot. Uh, but we just wanna make sure that, that, the, that we're recommending to the city manager that the city manager is, is holding staff accountable to, to sharing data like that across departments. Um, so, I, I would enter, I, I would ask for there to be a motion uh, to that effect then uh, to ask the city manager or to recommend to the city manager that she uh, ensure that staff are sharing sustainability data across departments for the purpose of fulfilling the sustainability plan. That was easy for you to say, so moved. Second. All right, then moved. Uh, by Kathy and Taya and supported by Jill Anderson uh, that we make that recommendation. Any, any comments or questions to that effect? All right, then all those in favor, uh, wave affirmatively at, at the screen. We can see you, seeing everybody, yes. All right, uh, thank you then, then that resolution is passed. Um, then uh, the, the main bit of business that, that we have left was uh, in uh, Commissioner Blood was, was, was primarily uh, sort of on it when it came to, to the November uh, recycling month stuff. Um, but again, she's predis predisposed today. Uh, but the gist of it was, was that uh, November's recycling month and uh, she was working on having a proclamation uh, for the commission to, 
to pass about recycling month and to do whatever you know educational activities we could around around that related to the proclamation and, and recycling um i don't know if other folks um I, I guess I don't really know where that where that so she was going to have uh, she was asking for volunteers to kind of help her with that I don't know if of Patty and Bessie or anyone else had been working with her or or anyone in the communications office around that proclamation and what what needed to happen there. We have not yet, but we're happy to when yeah we're happy to help in any way. So I think it's a great idea. Okay. Um, Cassie, has that? Uh, do you have any idea what we're talking about? I guess would be the short way, the short way to, to to ask that question. Has Kristen Blood discussed that proclamation with with you or Jessica or anyone in the communications? Um, to my knowledge, she has not yet. At least not with Jessica or myself. Okay. Um. Well, I I know. Um, I don't know if there's much then for us to get into at, at this point here in, in the meeting, but I know that Kristen was looking for folks to, if you were interested to, um, to, to, to step up and help her and Patty and, and the communications folks draft uh, a proclamation regarding recycling. Um, she had had, yes, Kathy. I was just going to uh, say, Andy, that I'd be happy to reach out to Kristen. Um, I've been, you know, we've been working together over the last couple of days. Well, not working together over the last couple of days because she's really feeling crap totally. So yeah. I'd happily reach out to her. And I don't know if Jill raised your hand to say the same thing. Yes. So if, you know, you can consider that, we'll cover it and make sure that this gets moved forward. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And if you need, I, I will, I will turn that loose on, on you all. And if you need any support from me or, or you know, whatever, just circle back to me via email or whatnot. She, Kristen did say that she would also uh, send an email to the group at, you know, sometime in the next couple of days. She had some other things that she had by way of updates and whatnot, but um, so, she, so I expected an email from, uh, from Kristen uh, regarding updates there. Um. All right, then we are we are motoring through in an uncharacteristically speedy, fast, speedy fashion today. Um, we we often get in trouble for taking too much time um, at, at these meetings, so we'll, we'll be able to point to this one and say, "See, we can go fast." Now we we're missing some people though, so you know we're anyway. Um, I do want to ask for public comment. Is there any public comment? I don't see any any. Uh, members of the public here on the meeting, but is there, do we have any online comment? I don't, I don't know what, I know on Facebook, there's a way to, for folks to comment. I don't know what the YouTube situation is. Uh, I'm not seeing any public comment anywhere. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chad. Um, all right, then other, other member comments, uh, including we do have, uh, we are taking, we don't have a meeting in November because there's an election there. The clerk's office um, uh, is handling. I don't know what all is on the ballot besides the, uh, at least where I live, there's a, a Battlefield Public Schools bond uh, issue. I would encourage folks to come out and support DCPS. But... I believe that's the only thing on the, uh... On that, that's the only thing to vote for. Yeah. Well, then it'll be quick and easy. Come out and do it. Or if you're like me and you get your absence, where's my application? Somewhere in my pile of files. You can get absentee ballot for no reason whatsoever. Just give your form back to the clerk and they'll send you a ballot. Um, so do that if you can. Um, so other other member, account, well, what I was, what I was, <laughs> But I was saying before I went on three different tangents and um, in, a, in a quest to not end the meeting early, apparently. Um, so December 6th, uh, I know. So if folks have uh, ideas for uh, agenda items, if there are folks uh, from city staff we'd like to talk to, and we've been kind of working our way through that. Um, we've had some sort of uh, 
smaller smaller maybe is the, the, the wrong word. Um, some other ideas thrown out. Um, have a list somewhere. I know uh, like Jill had uh, uh, climate migration was was an idea that uh, that Jill had mentioned to me at some point. How that that's affecting the the city or not. Um, but I just this open floor for committee committee member comment. Okay, I had something. Um, I just wanted to touch back on the um, the energy efficiency or the energy tracking that we were working with Bob on, and we're still we're still trying to get the pieces you've asked for. I haven't forgotten you, so we're uh, yeah. I'll try and be in touch. Hopefully, some before you know, sometime in the next few weeks. As soon as I get that information, I'll get it to you. Okay. Okay. That was going to be my question as well, but uh, I hope it wasn't too. Is it too challenging? Do you think it's going to be difficult to get it? It was fuel. It was vehicle type information. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be. Okay. It's not. I don't think it's going to be unreasonable. Oh. Yeah, we'll get it. All right. All right. Thank you, Patty. Yep. Yep. Um, I've read an article. Um, I think it was from the Washington Post earlier this week. That was, um, oh no, it wasn't from the Washington Post. Anyway, it was about Great Lakes um, climate change and how we should not feel like we are safe from it just because we have lots of fresh water um, and lots of undeveloped land doesn't mean that we're going to be safe during climate change. Um, anyway, it had some interesting ideas in it and I will, um, I'll share that article with you all. Um, also, there was a presentation uh, today at the Noon Rotary at the Cool Center from the Charitable Union. And they have some, they have been doing some preparedness around um, climate change migration to the area and what it means to have fluctuating temperatures and unseasonable temperatures and unseasonable rain and things like that. And I think um, one of our members reported that she just come from California and it was extremely smoky and there was, you know, homeless people, um, people experiencing homelessness. Um, camped out along the highways in such numbers that she was really astonished. And these are the little things that are climate, mi uh, climate change migration. It's just happening a little bit. We're seeing the, the smokiness in the air that we comment on because we've never seen it before. We see changes in, in human um, you know, occupation of land and whatnot. So these are things that we should be thinking about. Um, and I don't know if there, is, are there any other departments or organizations um, in the city or in the county that are working on this or interested in this? And should there be, should we have some sort of, um, not a task force, but like some sort of like little murmurings and inklings of people getting together and starting to brainstorm about things like this? Um, do we want to start thinking about and really putting a, a call for um, leadership in this in this area? Now we're going to extend the meeting. Sorry, Andy. <laughs> well, it's, no, no, that's that's fine. Um, so that's a great question, and I wonder, I wonder who else, I wonder who else in the in the community would be interested in sitting at a table like that. Um, so like if someone from Charitable Union, someone uh, from the Share Center, other people that are, that are working on how, I, I, I don't know, I don't, not just folks who deal with uh, homelessness issues, but like who, who else, like if we were going to do that for a meeting, you know, like we were going to say, oh, okay, in December, we we want to maybe just have the beginning of that conversation that Joe's talking about. Like, who else would we invite to that meeting? Would we, Kathy, you had your hand up? Yeah, my go-to is um, the Fort Custer folk and the federal um, building folk because you know the the military is all about preparing for this climate change stuff and what it's going to 
impact them and whatnot. And it seems like every time I've heard outside agencies speaking about climate resiliency and planning for climate change, the, the military folk and the, the um, I'm not sure how to describe them, like the CIA, CIA kind of folk are the ones really paying attention to that stuff. So I would suggest we knock on their doors, see if they got somebody that might help us point us in the right direction or help us figure out who to bring into a um, um, discussion. Thank you very much for bringing this up, Jill. Do you have, Kathy, do you have a direct contact with those folks or is it just that you've seen, I know you've mentioned them, or is it just that you've seen you know, the reports yeah. and the names in the... Correct, I don't have any direct contact, um, not legally anyways, but uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, but I, I hate to say that I would be happy to go dig around unless maybe Bob was raising his hand, maybe he's already got a line on something like that. Uh, well, uh, I didn't actually have a line on that. I was just wondering uh, to address Andy's question. When we think about who else might set at the table, I wondered, I was thinking about what kind of things do we anticipate that climate change or climate migration might present to the city? I, I could tell, you know, from the conversation, we think about displaced people, for one, but would we also... I know in Michigan, there are parts of Michigan that if climate change predictions come to fruition, uh, we're looking at higher levels of rain in our area. 30% more rain is predicted over the next 30 years. So would we think of people that might deal with flooding? Or we're, if we had heat events that occurred, or do we have vulnerable populations in the city that might need cooling centers or, or, or to be able to deal with a heat event? So I was just thinking if we thought about what kind of things we anticipate could happen, that might help us define who would sit at that table. Yeah, I, I know when the, you know, from our internal folks, like our DPW folks, and when we've talked about this in the past, um, you know, they've sort of industry-wide have, have shifted for, you know, events that used to be 100-year storms are now 50-year storm, you know, like the whole, the whole planning for your infrastructure and what things need, what types of weather events your infrastructure needs to withstand has you know, planning for that has, has ratcheted up for, for the reasons you're, you're talking about. Um, so certainly we have folks in the city that could speak to that from a, a infrastructure standpoint. Um, that, but I don't know, the, the, those are good questions, Bob. Kathy, is that your hand again? Yeah, and my cat. Um, is, um, is it possible for us to consider, and I'm really careful about this word, a work group? Uh, what I can't remember. We got some fancy name for what we call the groups that meet on a kind of semi unofficially, but they're still official. I can't remember what it's called. What about, I mean, I'd be happy to sit and brainstorm some of this stuff, Bob, because you're right. As you were saying that, I started writing down some things I had heard before the types of impacts we need to pay attention to for climate migration and resiliency. I'd be happy to gather and, and chat with that over in a month from now in our next usual meeting time, whatever we want to call it. Um, and with a little bit of luck, maybe even between now and then, I might be able to call somebody and get some names from the base that might be interested. Yeah, we as long as we don't have a quorum of people, I mean, that's, that's, that's the main issue. As long as we're not running a foul of, of Open Meetings Act, which you know, we used to have those kind of meetings, but then at some point the city decided to hold the, the our, our committee's structure, you know, responsible for Open Meetings Act rules too. Um, but, shoot, what was I gonna say? Um, there, there might be, some, so somebody somewhere in the city has contact with the the military folks. I, I don't know who it would be. Um, we, the first step there would probably be to go to, you know, just ask Rebecca and say, hey, do, you know, or, 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 
you know, this is a thought we have for a, a work group. Who, who do we, you know, how do we connect with the, the military folks? Either someone at the city or BCU or somebody has, has a contact with the Fort Custer military establishment. Uh, we have a contact with their environmental person out there. Um, mm -hmm. So it might be a place to start. Well, maybe in, in, unless there's there's a better or, or other specific idea that, that maybe we, we do shoot for our, our December meeting um, is being maybe just invite some of these, whoever we can think of and maybe brainstorm over the next couple of weeks, either you talk amongst yourselves or via email, like who, who might it make sense to invite um, and use that our, our December meeting of, of this body as a you know, throw out those questions that we that, that you all just been throwing out, and and say, hey, what 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 needs to be happening uh, in the Greater Battle Creek community with regard to being prepared uh, on this issue? We've we've been hearing anecdotally about pockets of people preparing on their own, but what's what sort of coordinated efforts need to be uh, underway or, or put started? Does that make sense? Well, I feel like I brought this up. Um, so I will, I can be the center rallying person for this. Um, so if you have contacts, why don't you email them to me and uh, we can work on doing the things that you just listed off here. Thanks. So, and I'm Jill Anderson Grants at Gmail. Yeah, if you look at the email that I, the emails that I send out, Jill's email is in there, like, it's in there, you need to find it. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that sounds good. And this could be a way that the, that the city, it, 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 you know, sort of gathering people together and, yeah. Other comments or, or questions from the committee? Yes, Kathy. Sorry, I just wanted to give um, salutations from Mike uh, Mishka. I saw him uh, not too long ago. Um, he really misses us. I know he really would like to get back here. And, it, you know, he is just swamped and overloaded, responsibilities for multiple plants, et cetera. Um, but he did want me to relay his best regards to all y'all. And also, he looked really good, and his wife is feeling pretty good as well. So, um, for those of us who have been with him for a few years, um, it's good. And I told him we miss him as well, but that Bob Gilbert was doing a pretty good job <laughs> number crunching stuff. So <laughs> yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike would be proud. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Mike Mishka, um, works, uh, for, for Denzel and was a long time, was was he a, one of the founding members of this body, like going back with, with you all, Kathy? Um, so he was on this this committee as a community member, um, and he's in, in environment does environmental work at Denso. And then uh, last year he got a promotion where he became responsible for a, a bunch more plants and whatnot. Had to step away, but that's who Kathy's talking about. Long, long time uh, member of the group. Um, he was he was a, a numbers data data kind of guy. Kathy's alluding to. Um, well, good. See him again. Yeah, tell him pass. Re reciprocate those salutations. All right. Any anything else? All right. Then thank you all for being here. For going with the flow of back back on Zoom and doing all all of the things. Um, which obviously it sounds like people scattered around a bit. It actually makes it kind of accessible to be able to get on and. and and be together from around. So uh, thank you very much. We will, we'll, our next meeting is December 6th at the same time. My assumption will be that we will be Zooming. We'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, thank you, Lisa and Cassie and Chad uh, from the city and all the city staff folks who are here. Uh, meeting adjourned at 4.30. Thank you all. <laughs>